Okay, I'm just going to run you through some useful techniques for improving the overall punchiness of colours in an image. So for example, we've got a photo of Marcel Schlock in Malta here, and these boats have all these fantastic vibrant colours, but they've not really been truly captured in this photograph. So let's do something about that. Now first of all, I'm going to use a hue saturation lightness filter but I don't want it affecting the sky because the sky is already quite noisy and increasing its saturation will just bring out more posterization and it will just look ugly basically. So before we do anything what I'm going to do is move over to the selections persona, pick up the smart selection brush tool and I'm just going to brush over the sky, there we go, just quickly create a selection and then in order to invert that selection I just need to two finger tap on the canvas like so and choose invert selection. Okay great, so now we've got most of the foreground selected which is what we want. So I'm going to move across to the adjustment studio and find HSL, there it is. Okay, so now I've added the adjustment. It's been masked to just this area, which means I can get rid of the selection because, as you might agree, the marquee is a bit distracting. So I can two finger tap again and choose deselect. Right then, so on the dialog down here, I'm just going to increase the general overall master saturation of the image. And it's starting to look better already. But we can also target individual colour ranges. So for example, I'll choose reds. Let's have a look at these boats down here. And I'll just bump the saturation up on those. There we go. And I'll do the same for yellows. So let's find some yellow tones just to make sure we don't overcook them. Again, I'll increase the saturation like so. And finally, the cyans. I'll just bump those up as well. OK. So then, just a useful little tip with adjustments is that because they're non-destructive layers, as we can see here, you don't actually apply them at any stage unless you specifically want to merge them down. But I would suggest having the flexibility of a non-destructive layer setup. So to actually get rid of this dialog, it just simply disappears whenever you select a different tool. So if you're looking for a specific apply option on the dialog, you won't find it. It's simply a case of selecting a different tool to get rid of the dialog. And of course you can bring it up again at any point just by double tapping the relevant adjustment here. Okay, so I'll just select the view tool again and then to fit to screen I can just double tap with two fingers like so. So we're getting there. Another really quick way of improving the sort of perceptual saturation of a scene is to intensify the contrast. So on the adjustment studio, let's find a brightness and contrast adjustment. And all I want to do is knock the brightness down slightly and increase the contrast. Now this effect is a bit strong because it's influencing the entire image. So now I'm going to introduce the concept of blend ranges. So across on the Layers Studio here, we've got the Brightness and Contrast Adjustment. If we tap this icon to get more options, we have at the bottom here Blend Range Options. So if I tap Source, I'll get a spline graph. And what I want to do is blend this adjustment more into the highlights than the shadows. So to do this, I simply want to grab this node here and drag it down. Again, if I just drag it up, we can see the effect it has it's quite subtle, but it just stops us from crushing these shadow tones too much. Okay, so finally then, we can use the sponge brush to increase saturation in specific areas. Now, I want to make sure I've got my pixel background layer selected. Then I'll move back over to the photo persona up here. And from this flyout, I want to select the sponge brush. So let's tackle this area down here. Now then, I'll reduce the brush width. I'll see what an opacity of 20% looks like and just brush into this area here. Okay, yeah, not too strong. That means I can then just go over several times and build up layers of saturation. 
Let's go over here. Now this is going to really make these greens pop, as we can see. And just over here as well. Like so. So it just helps to intensify these greens and blues a bit more. Okay, and that is it. Just some useful little techniques for helping to make colours pop in your image. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.